Hi, uh, today I wanted to show off one of our features. Uh, we did do it a little bit in the, the Sonnet Adapter video, but this is going to be um, SMB multi-channel. Um, so this is part of SMB3, so if your NAS supports SMB3, um, you should be able to enable it. Um, what is the difference between SMB multi-channel and port trunking? The, the reason this is a question is because I guess they do similar things. Um, so port trunking is about bonding multiple network ports together um, to get uh, either more resilience or more performance. Um, so the main difference um, between them is, is really the configuration of them um, and the hardware needed to support it. Um, so here's a little comparison chart between the two sides. Um, number one is really one of the most important features in my opinion, which is it is simply plug and use. So long as you have SMB multi-channel enabled on both the operating system of the client as well as the device you're transferring to, in our case here it's going to be a QNAP NAS, um, it just works so long as you've got two network connections at both ends um, or, or even more um, to the device. Um, so port trunking um, definitely still has a place um, but you do need switches to support it in most modes um, so you've got to have um, configuration done on the adapter on the switch on the adapter for the client end there's lots of configuration to get it done and get it working um, there's a few different types so you've got um, a few different ones the hardware one is normally called LACP or is the IEEE 802.3 AD standard um, but I'm going to show you how easy it is to to set it up uh, here on a QNAP um, so here I've got a, a TS-H1290FX. Uh, the only setting you have to do um, is come into your control panel, um, go down to the WinMac, NFS and WebDAV uh, section here in, in the Network and File Services section. And down here, it's probably not ticked by default. You do have to enable it. You've got the option to enable SMB multi-channel. Um, there are a few settings that you can do. Um, really, just which adapters do you want to restrict it to? Um, I've only got two adapters connected, adapters three and four, so I, I don't need to set anything up here. I'm just leaving it all on automatic, so I'm happy for it to work on those two. Um, but just tick that box, click Enable, and it's done. Um, I am on a Mac, and it has SMB multi-channel enabled by default. Um, so check your own OS if you need to um, enable it or not on the OS. Um, to give you a, a look at what this NAS has uh, connected on it, so if I go to the network and virtual switch and go to the interfaces, um, adapter 3 and adapter 4, um, they're both connected at 1 gig a second, so although they're 2.5 gig um, uh, connections, I'm only using 1 gig switches here, um, so I've got them both connected. I've set uh, static IPs, as, as I do with all the NAS, uh, just to make sure that I know where they are. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually um, do a speed test to this NAS um, with a single network connection um, connected as at first. So um, if I show you what the, uh, the laptop looks like. So right now I've got the two network adapters connected. So I'm just going to disconnect one. I think it's the Belkin one I'm pulling out. Um, so I've removed the Belkin one. So I've only got the single um, adapter connected. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount a share um, from my NAS. So I've got the AJA share here on the NAS. So that's here. This AJA share is the one I'm going to do a speed test to. Um, so I've got that one, one network adapter, and I'm going to test what speeds I can get um, with, with that setup. So here's AJA, just a speed test software. I'm going to choose the target disk. I'm going to pick the TSH1290FX and choose AJA. So if I hit start on this test, um, I'm expecting to get around 120 um, for both read and write, which is maxing out pretty much close to um, a single 1 gig uh, Ethernet port there. So we're getting that transfer speed there. And if I come and have a look at the uh, NAS resource monitor here, I'll go down to system resource, make that bigger, click on network. We can see adapters 3 and 4 here at the bottom. And I can see right now everything is going through adapter 4 to the NAS. Um, so everything's going through a single port, so I can see here the send and receives, you know, we're talking sort of larger, 100 megabytes per second plus. Um, adapter 3 is pretty idle, just a few kilobytes a second just maintaining the connection, so a pretty flat line there. Uh, so that's doing the transfers now. If we go back and have a look at AGA, we can see it's consistently giving us between 115 and 120. Um, so we'll stop that test now. We'll quit um, AGA. Uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to come in here, I'm going to have a look at the uh, the connection that's all set up. So there's the, the mount that's all done. I'm going to just click eject on it. So I'm going to unmount the connection. I'm going to reattach uh, the second network adapter. 
So if I get the Belkin adapter, I'm just going to push it straight into the USB port uh, on my Mac. Um, so we should see that appear here in a moment. Um, and once it's appeared, it'll get an IP address. Uh, once it's got the IP address, I'm going to remount um, to the QNAP and then I'll do the same test again. So we can see that's connected. I can see it's got an IP address, DHCP, that's fine. So I've got the two connections. Um, so now I'm going to uh, mount the AJA system folder. Oop, sorry. That's because I disconnected it. So if I go into here, TSH1290FX double click on the AJA so that's now remounted so now if I open up um, AJA system test again I'm going to remount that folder so we'll click open on it and we'll click start and down here you can see adapter 3 and adapter 4 so if we click start on that uh, we can see effectively no configuration needed at all on the Mac um, on the NAS nothing needed um, the speeds have doubled um, so that's the, the benefit of, of SMB multi-channel. So long as you've got two network cables going into your network and two network cables going from your client, so NAS and client both have two network cables going in, uh, you're going to get faster speeds. It'll go faster again if you have even more connections. Um, there is really absolutely no configuration. In fact, on the Mac, there is absolutely no settings at all for SMB multi-channel. It just works. It just works straight out of the box. Um, so consistently, I've, I've got double the speed now, and we can see traffic on both of them here. So they're both saying sent 100, uh, received 100. So it's it's just working absolutely easily out of the box. So no knowledge required to make this work. Um, I do have all of the network cables going into a single switch here. So there are some, I guess, caveats with that. So if you have, um, let's say, two eight-port switches, but only a, a single one gig uplink between the two switches, and you've got some of your you've got your client connected to one switch and your NAS connected to the other, um, this won't work because your, your bottleneck is going to be the uplink between the two switches, but being only a single one gig uh, link. Um, but I've got uh, two cables going from my NAS into a switch, two cables from my laptop going into a switch, same switch. Everything's working flawlessly. Um, the only thing you've got to do once you've turned on SMB multi-channel is just remount your shares, remount your your mount points in Finder um, for the, the NAS device itself, and it just works. It's really, really cool. Um, so that's um, SMB multi-channel. Again, you do have to have SMB3 as standard. So most of our NAS these days are going to have SMB3 enabled. So maybe one other check you could do is come back to that same place where SMB multi-channel was. Um, in the advanced options, now, there are options here for highest SMB version and lowest. Um, make sure that at least the highest one is set to SMB3. Um, by default these days on any new NAS, it's going to be set to a lowest SMB uh, version of SMB2 with the highest of SMB3. Um, because the NAS uses SMB3 here and my, my Mac is using SMB3 as well, everything's just going to work. It only works if you've got SMB3 activated and this SMB multi-channel box ticked. Um, so that's that's really how simple and easy it is to do. Um, it just absolutely works when you connect it. No configuration. Um, the only requirement is everything's on the same sort of network segment, if you like. So here I've got 10-10-2020 uh, and 10-10-2021. Uh, when I look at the uh, the laptop itself, um, it's in a, uh, a similar uh, setup there. So if I look at this one, 10-10-0-1-9-6. Um, and if I go to the uh, other adapter, uh, so 10.10.0.184. So as long as they're all in the same subnet, uh, they can all talk to each other, they can all ping each other. SMB multi-channel will recognize that there is multiple ways to the same path and it will just work. It will just be able to send the data um, on reads and writes to the device at a faster transfer speed. Um, so hopefully you found that helpful. Um, SMB multi-channel, it's a fantastic um, uh, upgrade on the NAS. Um, again, all you've got to do is come in here and enable SMB multi-channel. This is not ticked by default, so you will have to turn it on to take advantage of this. Um, if there's any questions at all, please do let us know in the comments section down below and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, really good, really good way to get some extra performance um, and extra resilience. If you, if you were to accidentally unplug a network cable, then as will still work, absolutely no problem. You'd still be able to have access to it. Um, so yeah, um, any questions, comments, just uh, fire them down below. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. And thanks a lot for watching. Thanks. Bye.